This is Mick Burgess, and I'm now backstage at the O2 Academy, joined by Robin McCauley of Michael Schenker Fest. Yes. Robin, how are we doing? I'm doing very well, thanks. It's great to see you. I mean, you're a few shows into your current tour. How have they been going so far? It's great. A bit of a slog on the old bus, but, you know, we're not uh, 16, 18 anymore, but uh, I think the shows have been great. Mm. shows have been great. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a two and a half hour show, so, yeah, yeah. and it's uh, nicely spread out, and it really takes you through all of those, you know, yeah. uh, uh, time lapses in the, in the Shanker history. It's a good, good phrase, the time yeah. lapses, yeah. Because it, it's, it's certainly different to the um, usual two, and I've certainly never seen a two like this in the past where four previous singers from across somebody's career right. are all yeah. jostling on stage. So when did Michael first suggest that idea to you? Um, to me it came uh, June, um, June 2016, maybe even mm. 2015. We, we played Sweden Rock. Yeah. And I had a call from Michael's people and they uh, had this proposition to bring in Gary and Graham and I never hesitated. I, yeah. I jumped at it and I went, oh my God, you know, when I go out solo with it, I usually end up singing Gary songs. And mm. now to be up there with, with Gary and Graham together and covering all our periods, it's just going to be a blast. So we did Sweden Rock and it, it sort of uh, had a domino effect thereafter. Because you, 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 you did two or three shows in the UK last year. Yes, we did, yeah. And obviously there's a lot of people up north and down south and jumping up and down hoping you're going to come to their right. cities and yeah. then you come back this year yeah. and playing those places you didn't play last year so yeah I don't do the booking so you know no. they, they, point and we, <laughs> they point and we go yes. you know and maybe the bus stops outside your venue yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. know because <laughs> I, think, I think most guitarists if you talk to most guitarists they'll say that um, working with one lead singer is hard enough so what's it like for Michael working with four lead singers you'd have to From ask inside you'd yeah. have to ask Michael that question you know he uh, uh, he made the choice mm -hmm. um, he seems to be happy enough with it he has uh structured the set uh, accordingly uh, from what he thinks uh, is going to be suitable for that kind of a show. Uh, there's a number of songs that we all interact on. We, I sing a lot of backups on, on a lot of the mm -hmm. tunes, both for Gary, Graham and Doogie. <coughs> uh, we sing a bunch of songs, Warrior, of course, which yeah, was yeah. the first release off the record. We sing that all together. And Last Supper's the one where you all had the same. And we, yeah. we do that. Yeah, we don't perform that live, but we, we Warrior is, 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 yeah. is a big yeah. part of the show. And it transitions as, as Doogie starts and uh, transitions into into Graham, into Gary, and yeah. I get I get to close. So we're doing a lot of UFO at the end of the summer. Yeah. Show, yeah. But it's... it's um, it works great. People go, wow, two and a half hours. But I'm used to a long show because I work a classic rock show in Vegas. Yes, I've done yeah. for like five years. So I'm used to a lot of singers and a lot of different mm. guitar players running around the place. And <laughs> That was going to be my next um, question. Maybe I should have raised it. That's how would Michael feel having four lead singers? But how does it feel for you working with the lead singers? Easy. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it in, the, in, 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 in terms of the show, because that's all it is. You're, you're just transitioning yeah. and there's X amount of performances to take place and we just move very easily from one yeah. one section into it's, you know it's like imagine one singer singing 30 songs or whatever it is right. four singers yeah so yeah. Uh, it's not difficult yeah it really isn't difficult so basically the show you each have your own set and there'll be a is there a sort of instrumental there's, there's link there's an instrumental yeah. that, that, that transitions that just and, spills up to the next section and yeah. he's got a great repertoire of instrumentals to draw oh, on as Lord. well so and he is on fire I mean he's just probably a better than he's ever been so who, so who opens, opens the show then Doogie opens the show well actually actually how we you know uh, uh, how we do it is Michael introduces mm. the band per se um, and we transition we start actually with a UFO so we start with Dr. Doctor which introduces mm. all and sundry mm. on stage and then we start to split off yeah and uh, Doogie gets the first uh, he gets the what do you call it when you're racing he gets the uh, yep. oh yeah he pole gets, position he gets pole yeah. position I was say, so, it's, it's, yeah so he's up front he'll be joined by Gary and myself throughout his set uh, transitions and another instrumental into into Graham we get back up there for some backups 
and the same goes for, for Gary and then down into my set and then we start to yeah. come back all of us together and interact in different styles. If doing a long tour for you having you know doing a shorter set and then doing some background vocals rather than doing the full two hour set so it must be quite well, a more relaxing way well, of doing well, it too, well, perhaps? Well, yeah, it's not stressful. Um, mm. um, if you think about the fact that, you know, I, as a singer, I get to stand back and uh, watch Doogie perform, followed yeah. by Graham, followed by, by, by Gary, and you listen to all of those, those, uh, uh, those segments that were the history of Michael Schenker, mm. you know? Yeah. And, and uh, now you put them all together in one big pot, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's, well, it's great. Great. And obviously, we've seen um, yeah. part of the rhythm section walking past the corridor just then. Chris Glenn and Ted McKenna really, Did we needed those in the lineup the to make this happen. The tank commanders, yeah. you know, they are so solid. Um, they're just such a very, very strong, integral part of, of, of that. that. Yeah. That thing that's behind us, mm. you know, we feel very. Ted is just an absolute monster. Yeah. Yeah. Moving on to the to the album, um, Michael Schenker Fest album, um, Resurrection. This came out earlier this year. It's been getting some incredible reviews, really. Some of the best of, of, of his career. How, how do you feel when you read those? I try not to read them and hope that you know the the reaction will be will be good for the sake of the, of the whole record and the purpose of that's behind it, you yeah. know, to put a collection of songs from, again, it's like the set, we're all, we're all on there in one shape or form. Yeah, yeah. And, and um, not everybody's going to like it, mm -hmm. but hopefully the real fans will like it and take it as the next phase, because, because that's really what it is. And it's, it's not something that Michael has done before, so mm. it's, a, it's a very new phase. Mm, you know? it's, 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 I, I do like the way it sort of brings everything full circle because you've got the old stuff that you all sang right. back in the day, right. but you've got fresh material that mm. you've all sang on yeah. and you've sing it together. So it's like a, it is yeah. like completing the circle in a way. Yeah, it, it, it is. It is. And, and uh, you know, there's, there's plans for another one. And, and uh, I think we will learn from Resurrection and, 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 and move nicely into the next phase. And, uh, uh, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing what we produce on that one. So, so how did you go about writing with four different singers? Did you each have a writing session with Michael or did you no, all write together Michael, singers? Michael had a collection <coughs> of, uh, of uh, song ideas mm -hmm. uh, in a sort of a demo format and we were all sent a batch of songs simultaneously mm. and we were all given the choice, you pick, pick what you think you want to work on. And so we picked our choices, and um, um, Michael heard what we had, and then we did a rough demo on them, sent them back to him, and goes, this is what I, I would do with this one. Mm -hmm. And then he sifted it through, and he goes, okay. He sort of uh, earmarked every song, and went, this is good, this is good, this is good, you do this, you do this, I like what you did here, and blah, 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 or I like what he did better, let's work on that one. Did, did you end up doing some of the, did, did you end up recording some of the same songs, yeah. and then? Yeah, 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 we did, yeah, we did, and then of course with Warrior, it was already predetermined yeah. that that would be a collection of all the four singers, mm. and blah, blah, blah. That sounds like um, quite an interesting concept to listen to from a fan's point of view, hearing the alternative versions with different singers as well, could that be? Yeah, I don't know if they kept them, but, but 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 and I don't know what kind of version it would be. You know, yeah. mine were mine were pretty basic, pretty rough, just to get the idea yeah, across. Yeah. And I think the last one I worked on was Heart and Soul. Mm. You know, and when I heard it, I went, "Shit, I have no idea what to do with this because it was so fast." Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So you know, I typically uh, go for very long walks in the morning. So I stuck my headphones on and off I went and. And then gradually it came to me and I sent it back and he goes, wow, I would never have thought of taking it that direction and bump it. Did you, did you get most of your first choices then? Pretty much, yeah, pretty much. There was a few little tweaks, there's always a tweak on a production level, you know, but uh, yeah, pretty much. So how, how long did you spend on putting the album together? Because I'd imagine it would be a bit more complicated than well, a it was a little complex because we were moving around. Yeah. Um, and we, you know, Gary lives in Bangkok. Oh, no. You know, uh, Doogie obviously lives in, in Scotland. Mm -hmm. um, I live in California. Mm -hmm. um, 
So we're all moving around, and it's like, how do, it's easy these days, of course. Yeah. You just send the files, and Bob's your uncle. But uh, we wanted more of a, of a togetherness on it. So uh, Michael Voss, who produced the album, came out and did some vocals with Graham and myself in L.A. So did you actually work together? At the yes, with Michael. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he came out, and we recorded there, and then he took it back and mixed it. And uh, there were some interesting other situations where I did, it was just me, uh, on the show in Colmar in France mm. and um, um, Vossi came into into France and he goes are you up for doing a vocal and I go fuck I just flew like 12 hours you know and he goes ah it'd be great if you can get one done do you have anything and I said well I have this and so we started working on, on that and yeah. I recorded that with him there and and that's basically we're done. We go back to the studio and piece it all together. And voila! <laughs> Just, uh, funny enough, I mean, having four different singers, you'd think it would be sort of quite piecemeal. But it's a very cohesive album. Mm. It doesn't sound like yeah, four different match. singers. And the, yeah, and, the, yeah and, and you're all very much very different singers as well. Yeah, and I think that's what makes it interesting. It is. I mean, it, it would suck if we were all the same. You yeah. Know? yeah. And, and, and so there's, there's a lot of different tone tonalities, timbres of the voices, yeah. and you know, and what was then was we're different now and mm. so you get a chance to you know see how we've progressed yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did I just say that well to us all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when when the tour is over what's what's next for you is that you finished for the year or have you got some more no, shows no I I, uh, I work a classic rock show in mm. Vegas have done for five years mm. um, almost 2,000 shows plus is, it, is that in one place then is yes that, it's, it's, it's in, it's in uh, we had a uh, it's called Raiding the Rock Vault and basically it's the story of classic rock 60s yeah. through the 80s so, so who else is involved in um, oh my god it's it's quite a it's quite a big cast we have uh, we use like Howard Lees mm, Hart's from guitar Hart, yeah, player yeah. and Paul Rogers MD currently yeah, yeah. for the last 15, 17 years maybe Howard's our MD uh, we have Doug Aldridge comes in on guitar. Mm-hmm. We've had Tracy Guns on guitar. We have uh, Rowan Robertson from oh, on guitar. Yeah, yeah. Um, we have uh, regular guests appearances from David Motta from Mario Speedwagon. Um, we have Hugh McDonald from oh, Bon Jovi. Bon Jovi. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's our bass player. Mm-hmm. And when he's not available, when he's on tour, we have we have other guys that that come in. Uh, we have Jay Shellen, who's with uh, oh, Steve Howes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Jay's our drummer. When uh, Jay is out, we have Blas Elias, who was uh, um, Slaughter's mm-hmm. drummer. And now there's the West Coast uh, trans Orchestra drummer. So we have him. Um, I think Jay's back in right now because Blas is out with... Uh, Getting ready for TSO. For yeah, they always two around Christmas time, don't yes, they? That's yeah. Correct. And there's two two versions: there's the West Coast, the East yeah. Coast. Um, we have um, we have two dynamic girl singers. We have Sean Coey that sings with Meatloaf, mm-hmm. and also sings with Dweezil Zappa. And then we have a girl that was on The Voice, Megan Ruger, uh, and she's our, our second girl. Both absolutely yeah. off the hook. We have Paul Shortino on vocals from Rough Cut mm-hmm. and uh, uh, um, Quiet Riot. We have uh, Mark Bowles that sang with Ingve and Ted Nugent. Mm-hmm. Um, yours truly. And um, we use sometimes um, John Bishaha that's in the new lineup of the babies. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and. Uh, yeah, it's quite a circle of friends. It sounds a lot of fun. It would sound, it would sound like it'd be a great thing to, if you could bring on to us. And well, play. actually, they they just uh, in my in the last two weeks, uh, the Rock Vault just now posted that uh, we will actually take it to the road. There's in Branson, Missouri. There's a country version which mm. does amazingly well. Mm-hmm. We just picked up the fifth year running Best of Las Vegas mm-hmm. show. Um, so we're writing on that. Um, we're at the Hard Rock. We started at uh, the old Elks Hotel way back. We thought we'd be there for one weekend. We ended up being there for a year and a half. <laughs> Moved from there up to the Tropicana for about the same length of time. And now we're over at the Hard Rock, which has now been bought by Richard Branson to mm. be called Virgin Hotel. So the Hard Rock will cease to exist as we know it. Mm. 
Um, and we will end that run end of May. I didn't know that about the Hard Rock. There's a, there's a bit of exclusive business news for everybody that's see, reading the business pages. See, you didn't yes. think we were going to get anything new out of this. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Um, so that, that I believe will be called Virgin Hotels. Mm. And Raiding the Rock Fault will uh, hopefully take to the road and also possibly find uh, new digs. So do you do sort of classic rock covers or do you do some of your own material no, as well? It's all covers. I mean, I spent uh, five, six years in Survivor, so we cover Iron yes, Tiger. Yes, yes, We cover that. Um, but typically we don't cover... I forgot you in Survivor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Typically we don't cover our own songs because mm. it's not about us, it's about the story yeah. of classic rock. So how, how, did, how did you find that transition to, to say, working with, um, you know, Grand Prix, Mike Schenk Group into you know, a more AOR sort of style of Survivor? Was that... I mean, they've got a great catalogue of songs. An amazing catalogue yeah. of songs. Well, you know, I spent many years with Far Corporation speaking. Yes, that's right. Yes, <laughs> the, yes, the and the likes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, as a singer, I think it's really good to... to um, there's so many different areas that you can <laughs> ply your, 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 your yeah. voice to. And I don't like being pigeonholed. No. Um, I've covered recorded so much material and there's so many labels that would go yeah but where's the power ballad mm. so they try not to let you out of out of your little cocoon you know? and i'm going sorry but you know there's so much music is there for exploring and absolutely experimenting with and, and i don't want just to do one thing because because how boring is that boring just to round off next year 2019 what have you got lined up yes for that? um there is a uh i think a five week tour, hope I'm right in saying that, middle of April to almost the end of May with Schenkerfest. Mm -hmm. And I'm working on, I've been told not to give names, but I'm working on a, um, also working on a, on a side project with some heavy hitting guitar players and drummers. And Are you allowed to mime what the names um, are? I don't want to tell anybody. <laughs> uh, yeah, but we've already started writing mm -hmm. and ex expect it to... Uh, Kick that out uh, around March, I think. Is so you'll have an announcement before. Oh before yes, then. we will. Yeah. yeah, I probably won't be the one that makes it, but something big to look But just talking about doing, you know, to yeah. continue to do things. <laughs> you know, I'm always doing things. What about a solo record? Have you got any plans for that? I've never really been interested. It's, no. it's not something that just, you know, I got people go, hey, dude, why don't you do a solo record? You must have a lot of people you can call on to come and Well, you know, there's you. always people, um, you know, I've always, I'm, I'm a huge Faces fan. Mm. Always have been. Mm. So, if I did another solo record, I'd want to go down that sort of road. Because I thought you'd say you get Ronnie Wood in. I just oh. love all that. That yeah. was just like something to get your teeth into mm. because it's just so trashy and sleazy and it's, just, it's just great shit. Well, Robin, it's been an absolute pleasure. Oh, it's a pleasure. Um, best Thanks. of luck with the show tonight. Thank I can't you. wait. Thank you. There'll be a you. lot of songs I'm going to enjoy hearing oh, tonight. You'll get quite a sampling. Yeah. <laughs> all the best. Perfect. So, Hello, this is Robin McCauley and I am talking to Metal Express Radio and we're here at the O2 Academy in Newcastle ready for the Michael Schenker Fest concert tonight. Thanks for having me.